So now that we've looked at inverse trig functions, let's generate some formulas or methods whereby we can take the derivatives of these trig function inverse trig functions. So I'll show you one where we can see how we can take the derivative of say the inverse cosine of x and then instead of doing all six of the inverse trig functions which would take quite a bit of time um, I'll just show you what the shortcuts are for those but let's work through this one. So if we had the function y equals the inverse cosine of x what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to take the cosine of both sides so the left side would be cosine of y, the right side would be the cosine of the inverse cosine of x, which is just x. So y equals the inverse cosine of x is really saying the same thing as cosine y equals x. So instead of taking the derivative of this function, I'll take the derivative of this, because they're exactly the same thing. So taking the derivative of the left side, the derivative of cosine y is negative sine y dy dx. The derivative of cosine is negative sine times the derivative of this. It's a implicit differentiation. And the right side, the derivative of x would be 1. So then dy dx will equal 1 divided by negative sine y. And what I will do in this next step is I will move the negative to the top and instead of writing y I'll replace the y with the inverse cosine of x because that's actually what y is. So dy dx is equal to negative 1 divided by the sine of the inverse cosine of x. Now you remember in the previous video that we can generate an expression for this so sine of the inverse cosine of x means there's some angle theta where the cosine of that angle is x. So cosine would be adjacent over hypotenuse. So this side must be x and this side must be 1. And so Pythagoras would give us this side to be 1 minus the square root of 1 minus x squared. So now I can say, okay, the sine of this angle is root 1 minus x squared over 1, which I don't need to write. So what have we shown? We've shown that the derivative of the inverse cosine of x with respect to x is negative 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared. That would be the derivative of inverse cosine of x. And then I think that you can see that if x now were some function in terms of u, then the derivative of that would be negative 1 over root 1 minus u squared. And then we'd have to multiply that by du dx. So this would be the formula for finding the derivative of the inverse cosine of some function negative 1 over the square root of 1 minus u squared times the derivative of u with respect to x. And so we could do the same thing with the inverse cosine, or sorry, the inverse sine of x, the inverse tan of x, the inverse secant of x, inverse cosecant, and inverse cotangent. We could go through and do this process and come up with the formulas. I'll show you what you would get if we went through and did all of that. So these are the derivatives of the six inverse trig functions. The derivative of the inverse sine of u is 1 over root 1 minus u squared times du dx. The derivative of inverse cosecant of u is negative 1 over the absolute value of u. That's the absolute value of u times root u squared minus 1. Let me just tidy that up I guess there. The absolute value of u root u squared minus 1 times du dx and so on. I won't go through and read all these through, but these are the derivatives of the six inverse trig functions. And now let's take a look at some examples 
uh, where we're taking the derivative of functions that are inverse trig. So let's say we've got to take the derivative of this inverse function. So dy dx equals, we're using the inverse sign, so that's 1 over the square root of 1 minus u squared, 1 over the square root of 1 minus 7x all squared times du dx. So the derivative of that would be 7. So this becomes 7 over 1 minus 7x times 7x would be 49x squared. So that's the derivative of this inverse trig function. Now we have the derivative of this one. Let's look at this example. So the inverse cosine, the derivative of the inverse cosine is negative 1 over root 1 minus u squared. So that would be e to the x squared, because that's what our function u is, times du dx, which would be e to the x. The derivative of e to the x is e to the x. So then we would have negative e to the x divided by the square root of 1 minus e to the power x to the power of 2. We have a power of a power, so we'd multiply those exponents. That's e to the power of 2x. So there's the derivative of a couple of functions. Let's look at a couple more. How about the natural logarithm of the inverse tangent of x? So dy dx equals, remember the derivative of ln u is 1 over u times du dx. So we have to take the derivative of the inverse tan of x, and the derivative of the inverse tan of x is equal to 1 over 1 plus x squared du dx. So times 1 over 1 plus x squared times the derivative of this, which is just 1. So in our numerator, we just have 1 times 1 times 1, which is 1, over 1 plus x squared times the inverse tangent of x. And in this final example here, we got y is equal to the inverse secant of x squared all cubed. So we're going to need to use the chain rule here. So we have an exponent. So we'll put the exponent down in front. And then reduce it by 1. So exponent down in front, here's the base, reduced by 1 times. Now we've got to take the inverse secant of something. So that should be 1 over the absolute value of u times root u squared minus 1. So that's 1 over the absolute value of this. Well, the absolute value of x squared, I don't need to actually write the absolute value because I'm going to be squaring it anyway. It's always going to be positive. Times, oh, I've forgotten, uh, u squared minus 1 for secant. So this squared so that's x squared squared minus 1 times du dx. So the derivative of u here would be 2x. So now up top we have 3 and a 2x, so let's call that 6x. And then we've also got this inverse secant of x squared all squared divided by x squared times the square root of x squared squared, well that's x to the power of 4, minus 1. And then I could do a little bit of tidying up here. I can cancel one of my x's. And so that generates this expression right here for the derivative of this function. So that's how we can take the derivatives of 
the inverse trig functions.